How would it feel to have a brain so superior that it works like a supercomputer? A brain where you can increase your learning speed by 15 to 20 times. Retrieve the information stored in your mind as fast as a machine. Process information and make decisions with the precision and efficiency of advanced AI. Your brain already has all these powers. You just haven't unlocked them yet. In this video, I'll give you the methods and protocols to reach a level of performance that is overpowered. And if it sounds unrealistic, I'll show you the scientific studies that prove you can improve your brain power and performance. Can the brain really be compared to a machine? A machine like advanced AI can store information and learn new things in a split second. While I'm not saying your brain can surpass AI by a massive difference, the brain we possess is far, far more powerful than you might imagine. Here's how you can make it perform at an advanced computer level. When you run a command on a highly intelligent machine, it almost always performs at its full potential. It uses its maximum RAM and CPU capacity. But how often do you use your full potential when tackling a task? Think back to the last time you performed at your full capacity. Data shows that, on average, humans use only 50 to 60% of their potential when performing a task. The key to performing at a supercomputer level is to use the maximum power you have. Here's the one-step formula to giving your full potential in everything you do. It's using all of your attention on the current task, and the tool to achieve this is focus. Before I give you the methods and tools to stay focused, many of you might think that focus means concentrating on something in a linear fashion for a long time. But our brain doesn't work in a linear fashion to make that statement true. There are continuously many thoughts popping up in our brain, and when you're focused, the thoughts that pop up happen to be centered around the tasks you're working on, so your thoughts align with the task at hand. I've studied, and continue to study, better and more efficient methods of getting into an optimal state of focus, simply because I need it more than anyone. And this is one of the best tips I have for you. Focus doesn't mean staying concentrated on a task for a long time. It means getting your attention back on track. It's inevitable that your attention will get pulled away multiple times while working. Focus is an active practice of refocusing, and the more times you practice refocusing and building plasticity in your brain, the easier and more efficient it becomes to focus, as the neurons in your brain adapt to it. Our brain is considered as efficient as one of those highly advanced database storage systems. It has an immense capability to store data. Our memory is sharper and more powerful than we might imagine. And here's how to improve your memory, one-on-one. -on -one. Research shows that the human brain can store nearly 3 million hours of movies. On top of that, it's highly efficient at deleting unnecessary data that exists only as junk memory. So learning too much or overfilling your brain with information isn't a thing. You can learn as much as you want, there's literally no limit. Your memory never runs out as long as you live. To put it into perspective, if you started watching movies 24-7, it would take over 300 years to fill that amount of memory. But if that's the case, why can't we recall things when we need to? And why is it so hard to remember what we've learned? It's because you've been using the wrong techniques all along. First, let's talk about what not to do. If we rank the memorization systems that exist from best to worst, I would put note-taking in the D rank. Think about what you're doing when you're taking notes. You're basically wasting all that effort copying phrases from your book onto another paper. It doesn't help your brain retain more. But if there's one memorization system that I'd rank S tier, it's Active Recall. I think it's one of the best ways to learn. Whether you hide your notes and try to recall them or summarize what you've just learned without looking at the book, though this can be one of the most mentally taxing methods, it's incredibly time efficient. You learn quickly and you never forget. Experts say that gaining mastery in a certain subject or skill requires 10 years of practice. Wouldn't it be better, though, if you could reach the same level of expertise in just four years and then have another six years to get even better and surpass everyone by a grand scale? In this section, I'll show you some methods or protocols scientifically proven to accelerate your learning. But first, learning isn't memorizing information or accumulating knowledge. Learning is about making changes in the neurons of your nervous system so when you perform the same task again, your actions change, and you perform better. In a study, while an individual practices a skill, a buzzer randomly goes off. When it happens, they're instructed to sit there, 
eyes closed, and do nothing for 10 seconds. What the researchers found is that during those 10 second breaks, or micro rests, the hippocampus and neocortex of the brain replay the skill the individual is trying to learn at 20 times the speed, leading to accelerated learning. The brain has a two-step learning process. It's the focus and rest cycle. Learning happens when your brain forms new neural connections. This method suggests that during learning, one should bring as much focus and active engagement as possible to encode the information. Then, get into deep rest as soon as possible. The real learning, or changes in neurons, happens during deep rest. During rest, the brain replays the activity of the cells that were active during learning, at a much higher repetition rate. So, while sleeping, you're actually getting more repetitions, at a much faster rate than normal. Scientists have located a trigger switch in the brain that, once unlocked, will give you immense power to handle hard work, to the point where it doesn't even feel like hard work anymore. So, imagine being willing to work hard from the moment you wake up. What would your life look like in five years if you worked on your goals with that kind of dedication? They've named this part of the brain the anterior midcingulate cortex, AMCC, which is said to be directly correlated with willpower and tenacity. Now picture being willing to wake up and immediately tackle the task you hate the most. Here's how you activate it. The strength of the AMCC is actually measured by its size. In one study, they found that obese people have a much smaller AMCC than people who are fit. Researchers discovered that the size of the AMCC can actually increase, and the only way to grow it is by doing the thing you hate or going through discomfort. Since obese people statistically encounter less discomfort than fit people, they tend to have a smaller AMCC. When you build your AMCC, you have more willpower, more resolve, and a higher likelihood of pushing through discomfort without giving in. Remember that the AMCC grows when you're doing something that truly sucks. It's not when you feel like it or when you're motivated. It's when you really don't want to do it, when you want to stay in bed, when you just want to relax only for today. Science shows that procrastinating, especially on short-form content, has a permanent negative effect on the brain. Just like in any improvement process where there are things you should do, there are also many things you absolutely must avoid to protect your hard-earned progress. Here's the math. If you use social media, you're going to stay addicted because it's designed that way by experts. And I can promise you that as long as you're addicted to something, you're never going to reach your goal. Because what does addiction actually mean? It's when a person repeatedly engages in a behavior, often in larger amounts or for longer durations than intended. So when do you have time to work toward your goals? Every time I go there, I see evil. Videos designed to steer you toward dangerous addictions, filled with insecurity or lust. Okay, maybe it's not evil. It's made for entertainment. But it's how your brain reacts, how it anticipates rewards and craves the next thing, turning the behavior into a compulsion. If you have a big goal, you can't afford to waste your time on pleasurable activities. If you want to be different, you can't act like everyone else and expect to get different results. Addiction and procrastination are huge topics, and they can't be fully covered here. But if you want a dedicated video on that topic, with tools and methods guaranteed to beat addiction or procrastination, let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, you can subscribe to my newsletter for exclusive content that's not available on YouTube.